Oh man, okay. So I've been working at this already on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Got a third panel. Let me take the pencils off for a second. Boom. So this is what it looks like without pencils. This feels pretty pretty good to me. I mean, it's about as tight as I get things, so <laughs> it's an accomplishment. This is a simple panel, but it's a significant one. It's the whole reason this row of panels is larger is I wanted to emphasize uh, this face, and it, I'm always a little trepidatious because it's easy to get wrong. So let's go for it. Whoops. I think I put a little bit too much under. Like maybe something like that. And, you know, there's different ways you can approach this. You can put the eyes closer together and... Um, you know, faces are difficult. I spent a whole year so far trying to learn them. Not that I couldn't draw the basic concept before, but I, you know, I didn't put any special emphasis on them. Now I want to do better at them. And at the same time, I want to go simple, right? Keep things simple. One of my lessons is to make sure that the chin is about right. One of my lessons learned, that is, not my lessons. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's her wing showing. I just realized I don't think I have her wing showing. Let's don't forget her wings. There we go. They're showing over there. Over here, we don't have to show the wings. We're too close. We should show that strap going down. All right, so we have basic, basic shapes going on. And I think I got these right in the pencils for once. Um, this would be a Wally Wood one or two, the big head. <laughs> We don't have to close these lines. We can leave them open as a lost line, but. Oh, I worry so much with these antennas. Let's see if I just do it like that. I might have to go and like revisit Ambush Bug and see what they did with this antennas. I think Giffen just normally would like just draw a smaller head. I mean, he was he was very utilitarian in that way. Um, such a huge fan of his. He kind of out Ditko Ditko in a lot of ways. You know, he he would do whole comics of nine panel way into the nineties. Like <laughs> that's um, to me, that's a baller move right there. And then also, I was um. I was on his Instagram, and somebody said, hey, you must have a lot of uh, extra art lying around for sale. And he, and he says, I throw out all my art. Any art that you can get uh, um, was rescued from the trash by my wife and my daughter, and I consider it to belong to them. Um, that's a Ditko move right there, man. All right. I think we got something going on. That wouldn't, didn't take very long. I kind of want to do focus lines here. But let's go ahead and um yeah let's do it let's do focus line so here's another yet another panel right so it's rename focus 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 by focus and um 
canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide, perspective, right in the nose, right in the middle. How about, how about select? Right there. And we better be on the right. Yes, we are. Okay. Here's our focus lines. <laughs> Groups of three or four. And you got to watch out for the ones that want to go completely vertical or completely horizontal. Like a lot, most of these are going to get covered up by the speech balloons, but not all of them. So, and it kind of makes me want to switch the brush nib out, but I really like this. Um, this kind of noisy brush. And I know there's, I have other noisy brushes that I could go with too that might do a little bit better at the tapering because this doesn't do very good tapering. But in my opinion, does it okay? I had my big insight with the focus lines and I was trying to draw an homage cover to um, that John Romita issue, Spider-Man No More, where he's he's walking away, it's the cover. And I, I had drawn a version of it with my character on it, where he's walking away from it. And you see Spider-Man kind of in the background, and you see... Not the one where it's in the trash can, that's the Ditko one, the Romita one. I think that's good, okay. Alright, now we need to... Take the drawing guide off. Make sure we get rid of the excess. <laughs> this is the critical step here. All right. Oops. Not to get rid of too much of the excess. I think in certain cases it's okay. It looks like a printing error, which once again lends it some analog warmth. I keep using that term, like I'm talking about guitar pedals or something. Um, there's just something about it. It feels a little bit crayon-y, feels a little bit, you know, vintage. And I like it. Okay, I need to fix that too, because that's not even on the same layer. You ain't even on the same layer. Off we go, man. That feels really good. Let's um let's do them balloons. And see where it gets us. First of all, we're going to hide one, one side in the panel border, and the other side is going to get hidden in the panel border as well. Like that one, but um, this is her line, this is the line from the computer. So we need to put um. And we're just going to hope for the best. 
and I closed all the lines correctly. I did not, so where is it missing? Probably there. Okay, that's good. That's fine. I'm looking at the linking spots. I think it, would, it was probably right there. Okay, that worked. Okay, now for the computer. It is close enough that I could push it a little bit further and use the panel border, and I think I will. So let's move that just a bit. Well, no, I can't because the word escape is already too close. So it's already kind of expecting me to do that. What if I put it right here? I don't like this edge here. No, I don't like this edge. All right, here we go. Whoops. My eraser has some of the um, noise in it too now. I can take it back out because it's normally it's okay, but when you're erasing on the speech bubbles, that's not what we want. All right. We're still in the right layer. Okay. When the computer speaks, it's from above. And it has a jagged um, loon. And I think that we should halo it. Um, no, 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 no. Leave that right there. Halo it off the tones. So we're just going to cut off. Is that not sitting in the tones layer? Oh, it's off the focus layer. Which means this is haloed off. All right. That's a good start. Let's take a look at it without the pencils. All right, that's feeling pretty good. Let's go for that final one. Bonus round. All right, now I want to make sure I'm in the right layer. This I'm not 100% sure of. I was thinking making, okay, it's going to be space. So maybe we draw this in the negative, like we draw this in in white. Um, so let's maybe we start separating it out. Okay, so let's like all of this can be ink on the ink layer. This sort of warp effect will be in white on a tone slayer or something. So let's do that. Whoops. Speaking of. No, I want it to be like that. So in this case, we're kind of making 
a version of what the spaceship or the space pod looks like. Now, lucky for us, we won't have to draw the spaceship a lot because it's crashing. So, you know, after we draw it crashed, we will never have to draw it again. Hold on, where is it? Reference. There it is. It's this spaceship. But we're seeing it from a different angle. We're seeing the, the what's behind it, which, you know, I didn't exactly develop a 3D model for this thing. So, um, there's certain things that we have to put in, like this pod here has to be shown because we can we would be able to see that from behind. This engine here. Whatever this pod looking thing is. Then this is an engine right down here. And maybe for symmetry's sake, there's two of them. That's that's where the exhaust of the spaceship is coming out of. And then these kind of end like this. Whoops. That's so this sort of panel design. I think we're on to something. Check it out. Um, okay, plus it's pretty small, so that's cool. And it's got its... Uh, Show the, you know, like one of those insects that's, it goes really around and then suddenly goes really straight. <laughs> that's what's going on here. That's the idea for my spaceship here. All right. Let's take a look. And we're going to halo the whole thing. That looks pretty good. All things considered, that is not bad. We can cut some exhaust lines through. It's about to go into warp drive here, so it's going to do something amazing. You have to remember when you're doing something small, you want to go into small detail lines, thin, thin line weight. Watch that line weight. This is something that somebody can tell you about a million times, and then you won't even realize when you're doing it um, if you're if you're still using thick line weight. Because like, It's a hard habit to get rid of, but okay. So this is the actual size and we can see it. All right, this is looking good. All right, now the last line here, there is some more text because it says engaging jump engines for three, two, one, and then VORP, you know, as it, as it warps. I think, um, yeah, I think that's what it's gonna do. So let's let's do the sound effect. Kind of like exactly what I had here. Speaking of line weight issues.
All right, let's take Vorp here. Putting this on the ink layer was maybe not the smartest, because what I want to do is warp it a little bit. Make it smaller. We can remember we're going to go high contrast here in a second because we're going to be showing um, space, you know. And then the, this little sort of warp area is going to be drawn in eraser in the negative. And we have these kind of rings of energy. Is it? Engages its warp engines. And each time we, we make one of these choices like this, one of these creative, like, this is what it looks like when a ship warps. We're doing a little bit of world building. We're saying this is what, this is what happens. And we're letting readers in on a little bit of the world. And that is, I would say, nearly as important as the story or part of the story. You could even consider it to be a huge part of the story. Ooh. How about this one right here? <laughs> and as I get further away, the line way should go thinner and thinner, which I didn't exactly do here. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay. It's gonna get thinner once we put the background in, anyways. Oh, and I kinda want to put some like kind of nebula clouds. Up here, okay. Be less boring than just flat black space with stars. So. All right, click all in. Let's see what we got. So these are already like, also, these smoke rings here should be kind of degrading as they, like this would, this should be the sharpest one and then they should be kind of like deforming the further he gets away or she gets away. That's looking good to me. There's plenty I could fix here, but... Just eliminate the confusing parts. Redraw them. <laughs> One thing I could do. Fade. Let's put the 
this down. Okay, I think that's okay. Um, now we're going to run into the problem. I got five minutes left of video, so I may not be able to finish it within the space of this video of how to get flat black on this side and then kind of pull it off on that side. Well, we definitely want to put it on another layer. Let's put it on the focus layer because we have very little chance of interacting with that panel, so we can use that layer. And I'm just going to use the rusty nib to do it. So the drawing in the eraser is going to be hard because it's going to be black. So what we're going to have to do is reduce the opacity here in a second. So let's let's also let's halo out the ship a little bit. Am I on the right layer? Yes. I can tell I'm going to have a lot of trouble figuring this part out <laughs> because I'm using the nib, which has a lot of noise in it, which has a lot of holes in it. Like when I draw a line, there's a chance that there could be like a little space in it. And I want that. I want there to be some noise, but it's just there to make my life difficult sometimes. All right, so let's say, let's say I put it right there. Yeah, I didn't think so. So obviously, I have to double up these lines. Double, double it up. Sometimes the noise is kind of cool because it's kind of like creating stars almost. As long as I don't go over it a million times. You know? Well, if I did it now, of course it would work. But it's the edges. It's only the edges that have that noise. So maybe I should do this again with allowing for the noise, right? If I do, hold up. This is the full texture. Make, I'm, I'm varying my pressure to try and get a different size. Noise in there, okay. Let's bring it back to small. Whatever I did over there, I gotta do the same thing on this side. Hold in, we got it. Oops. 
Let's see, should I go with flat black? I mean, I wonder if that's the way to go. Because it's just easy enough to, sorry, do like that. Nice. Well. Okay. This will have to be all like put in, but we're going to take this layer. Bring it back. Where's the pencil layer? Okay. All right. And this looks good. <laughs> I'm hoping I haven't fooled myself. I've never actually tried this before, by the way, just so you know. But I tell you what, I think it's pretty clear that I'm getting another page done today by hook or by crook, even if I don't finish it on the stream. I know I'm going over a little bit. Well, let's bring back the arc. Right, let's take a look. We're bringing, um, okay. Let's take the pencil layer back out. And you see the effect I'm going for. It's like, okay, there's the ship, and it's diving down this hole formed in the warp. Let's see if we can get rid of the. Let's see if you can see that a little bit better. And since it's done just with a racer, there's no holding lines. Um, so we're definitely in the realm of special effects. Now this part is just going to have to be very meticulously cleaned up. But I actually kind of like the noise that's still in here. Where it's been chopped up, it kind of feels like stars or like an energy effect. Like that's pretty cool to me. So Rusty Nib is playing, paying off at this point. In fact, we could go lighter and lighter and introduce more noise the further away it goes. 
for an additional effect if we wanted to. This area I want to be very careful with. Moving in the right layer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish this up. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Stay tuned. There will be more comics every day. Check out Drive-In Saturday this afternoon. I mean, this evening at 6 p.m. And this page will probably be done by then, I'm hoping. And, um... Then we'll, uh... Start on the next page, page 6. Which is where she gets crash landed on Brutalor. Or Talor. The original name is Talor of the planet. Yeah, this is going to be pretty easy. I think I can get the rest of this done. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.